very funny gentleman. Give it up for Sean McCarthy, everybody. Sean McCarthy. Thank you very much. Um, I was in a bar recently, and they had an arcade punching bag machine. And on it, it said, if you beat the high score on the punching bag, you'll get a $30 credit towards your bar tab. Because if there is one person we want to be extremely drunk, <laughs> it is the strongest and most violent person <laughs> who has ever been in that bar. Um, I think what I learned from the 2008 financial crisis is that finance means you can steal money from people as long as you do it in an extremely boring way. Because think about it. It's easy to call 911 and go, Hello, police. People have broken into my house. It's much more difficult to call 911 and go, Hello, police. Numerous bankers have been bundling high-risk mortgages together and then selling them as though they were AAA investments <laughs> while ignoring the internal review processes at their bank, which have on multiple occasions alerted the CEOs of these banks that fraud was occurring. And yet these CEOs still signed off on the revenue statements in clear violation of the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. I'm in the lobby at Citigroup. When will the squad car get here? And now we have this terrible economy. And I would talk to you guys about how easy it would be for politicians to fix this economy, but I'm sure you're all sick of hearing about how we need a large Keynesian spending bill to offset systemic unemployment in the middle of this liquidity trap. Every comedian has a bit about how we need a large Keynesian spending bill to offset systemic unemployment in the middle of the liquidity trap. I remember the first time I heard Carlos Mencia's bit about how we need a large Keynesian spending bill to offset systemic unemployment in the middle of the liquidity trap. I am writing a book. Um, my book is for women who make love to men with small penises. <laughs> I'm gonna call it, he's just not that into you. It's interesting thinking about our attitudes about sex. You ever think about our slut-shaming culture? From the moment a young woman hits puberty, men are constantly pressuring her for sex, and then we act like she's a bad person when she does it. That's like if a homeless guy was following you five blocks, unceasingly asking you for a dollar, and finally you go, all right, all right, here's a dollar, shut up. And he just looks at you and goes, God, don't you have any respect for yourself? <laughs> I'll bet you'd give a dollar to anybody, you dollar whore. <laughs> it's the opposite for men. Women get slut-shamed, men get virginity-shamed. None of this is good for gender relations. You see that movie, 40-Year-Old Virgin, the first thing they say when they find out the guy's a virgin is, well, you just gotta find a drunk girl. <laughs> yeah, that's a great message in our culture. Losing your virginity is so important that if you can't do it, you should commit a gray area rape. <laughs> Because virgins are losers. Don't you want to be cool like rapists? Uh, uh, another thing I'm a little tired of is when people say the Second Amendment is the reason we can't have any law, making sure crazy people don't buy guns. Pretty sure when they wrote the Second Amendment, there was maybe one schizophrenic per city, and you just knew better than to sell them a musket. <laughs> I think you should have to get a mental health screening to buy a gun, but if we can't do that, could we at least Google people before we sell them a gun? <laughs> because it's always the exact same story on the news, you know? He was a loner who had trouble with women and wrote long, rambling manifestos on the internet. <laughs> Just once I want to hear that news story followed by, and that is why we decided not to sell him a gun. <laughs> 
Uh, another political thing shouldn't be political is global warming. That's like a real thing. I find it interesting there's people whose entire job is to deny that. Like, what do you do for a living? Well, an oil company pays me six figures to go on television and uh, argue with people about a phenomenon that's been confirmed across hundreds of scientific journals. Uh, and then I also do freelance work denying that Paul McCartney is still alive. <laughs> I wanted to be a school teacher, but I realized I could make eight times more money doing the opposite. <laughs> I wish there were other facts that profitable to deny. Why can't someone pay me a bunch of money to go on TV and argue with people about whether or not liquids quench thirst? <laughs> I don't care what the thirst experts at Gatorade tell you. The best thing after a workout is drinking a glass of sand. <laughs> Um, I live in New York City now. I enjoy it. There are many beautiful women here. You ever see a beautiful woman in public and think, I would do anything to be with her? Yeah. Except for talk to her. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys very much. I'm Sean McGarvey. <laughs> Give it up for Sean McCarthy, everybody. Really, really fun stuff, man. That was awesome.